In this video, we're doing an applied optimization problem, and we've been asked to find the dimensions that minimize the surface area of an open-topped rectangular box that has a volume of 972 cubic inches and a bottom that is twice as long as it is wide. So the first thing we need to do is dissect this problem. And whenever you're doing an applied optimization problem, I always like to identify the word maximize or minimize or maximum or minimum so that we can just hone in on what we're being asked for. So we're looking for find the dimensions that minimize the surface area. So we want to go ahead and underline that because what we need to do is minimize the surface area. So just underline that word minimize and recognize that because we're minimizing surface area, what we're gonna eventually need is an equation for surface area. Well, the surface area of a rectangular box, normally if we call this the width, this the length, and this the height, the surface area or the area of the bottom of the box is width times length. So let's go ahead and just call this area would be equal to width times length, but then we would have to multiply that by 2 to consider the bottom and the top, because the top of the box also has area width times length, or W times L. So normally we would multiply that by 2, but in this case we have an open topped box, so we don't need to multiply this W times L by 2, we just need to consider the area of the bottom. What about the area of this front side right here? Well that's width times height, so that would be plus W times H. But the area of the back of the box, this back side, is also W times H. So we can multiply that by 2 to account for the front and the back. And then lastly, we have the left and the right hand sides. Well, this right side right here, we can see that the area of that is length times height. So we would add to that length times height. And then to consider both the right and the left hand sides, we would multiply that by 2 to account for both of those. So this is going to be the surface area of our open-topped rectangular box, and we'll just put that right there. So now we have an equation for surface area, but we need to get it in terms of one variable only, and right now it's in terms of three variables, W, L, and H. So how are we going to get it in terms of one variable? Well, we're going to use the rest of the information that we've been given in the problem, and our volume formula for the volume of a rectangular box, volume equals length times width times height. So we've already been told that the volume is 972 cubic inches. So we can plug 972 in for volume and say 972 is equal to length times width times height. Now what do we know about the length, width, and height? Well, we've been told that the bottom of the box is twice as long as it is wide. So if the width is W, that means the length has to be 2W because it's twice as long as it is wide. So what we can do is substitute 2W in for L, and we can say 972 is equal to, instead of L, we'll put 2W. So we'll have 2W times W times H, and then we can say 972 equals 2W squared times H. Now if we solve this for H by dividing both sides by 2W squared, we'll have 972 divided by 2W squared. That's going to give us 486 over W squared equal to H. So now if we go back to our surface area formula, because that's going to be the formula that we need to minimize, we need to get it in terms of one variable. So we'll rewrite it and we'll say area is equal to, we'll leave the W, but then for L we'll substitute 2W, because we know that L is equal to 2W. So we'll substitute 2W, then we'll say plus 2W, but then we know H is equal to 486 divided by W squared. So we'll say 486 divided by W squared. Then we have plus 2LH, so we'll say plus 2, L is 2W, so 2W, and then H is 486 over W squared. And now notice that our surface area formula is entirely in terms of the variable W, so we reduce it to just one variable. Now we just need to simplify, so we're going to say area is equal to W times 2W is 2W squared. Here, 2 times 486 is 972, the value we started with, so we're going to say plus 972. This W here will be canceled out, and instead of W squared, we'll be left with just W in the denominator. So we'll have 972 over W. And then here, again, we're going to get this W to cancel with one factor of W from the denominator, leaving us with just 1 in the denominator. So 2 times 2 times 486 is 19. 44, and then we have W in the denominator. 
because we have a common denominator between 972 over W and 1944 over W, we can add these two terms together and we can say area is equal to 2W squared plus 1972 plus 1944 is 2916 over W. Now since we're trying to minimize surface area, area is the equation that we need to optimize and in order to do that we need to take the derivative so we'll call the derivative a prime since the original function is a equals so we'll say a prime is equal to and then we'll take the derivative so the derivative of 2w squared is going to be 4w and then the derivative of 2916 over w is going to give us minus 29 16 over w squared and the reason is because we can change 29 16 over w to 29 16 w to the negative 1 this is really w to the first here we can bring that to the numerator by changing the exponent to a negative so we get negative 1 and then when we take the derivative we multiply the negative 1 by the 29 16 so we get negative 29 16 then we subtract 1 from the exponent so negative 1 minus 1 is a negative 2 and then in order to make the exponent positive, we move it back to the denominator and we end up with a negative 2916 over, instead of w to the negative 2, now that it's in the denominator, we have w to the positive 2. So that's how we end up with minus 2916 over w squared. Now we'll find critical points of this function by setting it equal to 0. So we're going to say 0 is equal to 4w minus 2916 over w squared and we want to solve for w. So we'll add this second term to both sides to cancel it out from the right and we'll get 2916 over w squared equals 4w. We'll multiply both sides by w squared to cancel out the w squared from the denominator on the left and we'll get 2916 is equal to 4w cubed. Then we'll take 2916 divided by 4 and we'll get 729 is equal to w cubed. Now if we take the third root of both sides in order to solve for w, so we'll take the third root of both sides. On the right hand side, the third root of w cubed will just be w. On the left, the third root of 729 will be 9 because 9 times 9 times 9 is 729. So w is going to be equal to 9. So 9 is the potential critical point of the function. We want to go ahead and draw a simple number line and we want to plot our critical point right in the middle. So we'll say our critical point there is w equals 9. We want to test the interval to the left and the right hand side of w equals 9. So we need to use test values. So we'll use w equals 8 and w equals 10 and the test value w equals 8 should tell us the behavior of the function to the left of w equals 9. The test value w equals 10 should tell us the behavior of the function to the right of w equals 9. So this is the first derivative test. We're going to be plugging the test values 8 and 10 into the first derivative a prime. So we want to plug those in so we'll go ahead and say a prime of 8 is going to be equal to and we'll plug that in right here. So 4 times 8 is going to be 32 minus 29 16 over w squared or 8 squared so we get 64. 29 16 divided by 64 is about 45 so we get 32 minus approximately 45. The important thing is not the exact value of this right hand side but whether or not we get a positive or a negative result and obviously 32 minus about 45 is going to give us a negative result and we'll come back to that in a second. Now we want to work with our other test value, so we'll say a prime of 10 is going to be equal to, plugging 10 into a prime, we'll get 4 times 10, or 40, then we'll get minus 29, 16 divided by 10 squared, which is 100. 29, 16 divided by 100 is about 29, 40 minus about 29 is a positive number, so we can go ahead and say our result's going to be positive. So now we want to plot these on our number line. When we plugged in w equals 8, we got a negative result, so we got a negative result, which means that the original function is going to be decreasing in this interval. If we get a negative result, the original function is decreasing. For a prime of 10, we got a positive result, which means the original function is going to be increasing in this interval. And now the first derivative test has given us a really clear picture of the fact that w equals 9 represents a local minimum of the function because we can literally see the original function decreasing and then when it hits w equals 9, start increasing. So this is the lowest value of the function at w equals 9. 
Therefore, we've used the first derivative test to prove that w equals 9 represents a local minima of the function, which means that it's the value that minimizes the surface area. Now that being said, w equals 9 is an important value, but it's always really important with applied optimization problems that we go back to the original problem and look at what we're being asked to find. So it says find the dimensions that minimize the surface area, not just a value for w, but find the dimensions, which means we have to give the dimensions length, width, and height. So we have to use w equals 9 to find length, width, and height. Well, how are we going to do that? We already know w equals 9, and let's just go ahead and say length times width times height. Well, we know w is 9, so we can say w is 9. We know that length is 2w, so if we plug in 9 for w, we can say length is equal to 2 times 9, or length is equal to 18. So we can say 18 here. And then for height, we know that height is equal to 486 divided by w squared, so we can say height is 486 divided by w is 9, so 9 squared or 81. 486 divided by 81 is 6, so the height is 6. Now remember, the volume was given to us in terms of inches, which means the dimensions also have to be in terms of inches. So what we can say is that the dimensions that minimize the surface area are 18 inches by 9 inches by 6 inches. And that's how you use optimization to find the dimensions that minimize surface area.